Stuart Kane, first of all, um, absolutely delighted to have you on board with the ACE programme, the first uh, city we're going to be going out to. But for you, um, why is it important to you at Warwickshire to get involved with this programme? Well, Warwickshire is in the heart of Birmingham, uh, one of the biggest and most diverse cities in the UK. And, and we need to make sure that when we hold a mirror up to the club, both in terms of the playing staff, but also the people working at the club, that it represents all of the communities that sit around Edgbaston. Uh, being honest, we're not there yet. So this is the one of the first steps that we're taking to try and address that. Yeah, we had a call, didn't we, with a lot of your team, um, everyone from people like Paul Farbrae to Ethan Gordon. Um, there was a real enthusiasm. I, I was actually surprised when we started the conversations, but there seemed to be a really real appetite amongst your staff and team. Yeah, there, there really is, because I think we've worked really hard with the South Asian communities over the last four or five years, and that's really started to show results now. About 60% of our academy age group comes from South Asian communities in the, in the city. We've just signed another lad, uh, Manaj Rahal, on a, a rookie contract. So he's come out of the academy. We had a, a wicketkeeper last year, Vikai Kelly, come through. And we had a 14-year-old spinner, Taz, from uh, one of the communities in Birmingham as well, played for the seconds last year. So we've really, having invested over the last three or four years, we've started to see that come through now in the quality of players that are coming into the top end of the academy and, and hopefully getting into professional contracts. But... If you look at the black community, cricket in Birmingham 15, 20 years ago in areas such as Handsworth, etc., was a really vibrant sport. You got really vibrant clubs. And it wasn't just about the cricket, it was about the social side as well. It was a place where people met, it was a place where people helped each other, and it was really part of, of the social scene. That, that's fell away a bit over recent years. And, and I think as soon as we started talking to you, it just really became obvious that we'll be absolutely crackers not to do this because it's, it's a really important community. And I personally feel that we should make sure we represent everybody in the city, not just um, certain communities. Um, and so it was really important to say, let's raise the bar a bit about how we work with the Black and Afro-Caribbean communities, um, sit alongside the work we're doing in other communities to represent that broad diversity across the city and make sure we do try and get to that objective of holding that mirror up and making sure that we represent everyone. Let's be honest as well, that for all of us, whether it's here in London, Birmingham, around the country, there are going to be challenges, right? What do you think in your area are going to be some of the hardest ones to crack for us to make success in this? I think the first challenge is that we've got to make sure that this looks serious. It's a, it's a proper programme. So that's why we're keen to work on the coaching side of things about identifying talent and getting into the pathway. But also how do we use that as a catalyst to help clubs like Handsworth Cricket Club and Holford Drive re-establish their position in the communities and then how do we also link it in with the Edgebaston Foundation to make sure that we are launching some social initiatives that sit alongside the cricket program and for example we've talked about having a, a celebration of Afro-Caribbean black culture at Portland Road our training ground mm. in May where we'll literally just open the doors for the weekend bring kids in who've never played to see if they're, they're any good and they can get onto some of our development programs and get the barbecues going get the music going invite the community groups in as well make it a really big social two or three day event as much as a cricket event. Then as I say, it's important that we try and involve all elements of, of the community. Um, I think we've also got a barrier probably around re-engaging kids who aren't playing cricket again. How, how do we make the sport exciting for them? Because they've, they've probably spent the last five, 10 years watching football and other sports. So I, I think we've got a job to be done there. And that's why I'm keen to work with yourselves and things like the ambassadors and how we do try and reignite that passion. But then we've actually got some practical barriers as well. How do we make sure that they've got the right kit, that they can afford to get to training? And we've got to accept some of the thornier issues about, is it safe for these guys to, to, to travel across town and, and girls? How do we make sure that it's, it's a welcoming, safe environment for them to enjoy cricket? So um, a long answer, but I think there's various strands to the, the barriers, but we're, we're up for the challenge and hopefully this isn't a one-year programme, this is a 5, 10, 15-year programme. And that's how we'll judge success in five years' time. Have we built a vibrant cricket community that can allow people to play and benefit socially? But have we also given kids the opportunity to join a pathway that wasn't there to them before? And also for you, I mean, you're only what, a few months into your new role. Um, this is a chance, I guess, for you to have a bit of a legacy as well. Just leave something that potentially, if we crack this, it could have impacts in the next, like you say, five to ten years. 
Yeah, I think, I think it's bigger than that. I mean, I've worked in other sports, football, um, particularly I worked in Wolverhampton at Wolverhampton Wanderers and, and Glasgow with Glasgow Rangers. And I've seen firsthand the power of sport in bringing communities together. So I want to try and take some of that thinking into cricket. And I think this is a brilliant opportunity for us to start to do that. And as I say, my ambition is to sit and watch five or six, 16 or 17 year old lads that come from Afghanistan, Sri Lankan, Pakistani, Indian, Afro-Caribbean communities, Ghanaian communities, um, all playing together, regardless of race, colour, background, family circumstance, money in the pocket, uh, enjoying the sport and, and taking advantage of the opportunities that hopefully cricket can create as an elite sport. Well, Stuart, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I have to say that just speaking to you and your team, um, I know that it's, like you say, it's bigger than all of us. It's about creating something. I think we're going to have some fun. So thank you. Brilliant. I think we are. Thank you.